<laughs> Hello, Janine. Hi. It's so lovely to see you this morning. I heard what you just said, you know, I don't wake up this early for anyone. <laughs> oh my God. Especially in quarantine, because like, I'm sure every opera singer is sleeping until like midday because they don't have to get up for rehearsal or whatever. <laughs> Oh, we've lost you already. You know, we have an. I oh, know. Here we go. No. We've got you. We've got you. We've got you. We've got you. It, yeah, but there is sticking. Yeah, I've got you again. Um, but yeah, it's um. But we met, didn't we? Um, when you were doing Musetta at uh, Scottish Opera, and uh, I was covering yes. you. Yes, I was covering you at that time. Um, and yes. yes. And then I went on to go and do it myself at uh, ENO. So that was good. It was a great, it was great to watch you do it. And it was great to learn from you doing it. And then I went off and did it myself, which is fantastic. <laughs> I really love you, Nadine. You've been a, a great inspiration ever since that time as College Shopper because it wasn't easy. And um, you really motivated me. So thank you. Oh, thank you. I mean, I, I do believe that when you cover someone, you're the, the person. You are the best. That's the other thing. You're the best cover I have ever met. Um, because the singers and um, um, yeah, we miss or the, the the people the people who they're they're covering are not so nice to them. So I'm glad our interaction was was uh was a good one yeah it's so important i mean i just think whoever i'm covering i'm just there to support them it's not about me getting on stage it's about me learning my role properly but it's not about me getting on stage it's about the the, the principal knowing no if anything happened whatever even if it was to sing for five minutes that yeah. they could have a rest or something i'm there just to support i'm not there to do anything else yeah i want. never felt that you were there trying to take my role <laughs> no not interested when it's my time it's my time and i don't want to take anything that's not mine because you know what what is meant for you will never pass you ever you know anyway it's 901 good morning everybody oh my gosh i've got you've got alison morning alison morning lena morning susan morning everybody <laughs> um, i'm making tea <laughs> So, um, hello, I am Nadine. I am the intuitive Verdi soprano. I am a certified NLP mind coach, a certified high performance coach, and I am a healer. I am, uh, I love, 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 love singing. And I'm a professional opera singer as well, singing all over the world. And one of my passions is celebrating, championing, and just connecting the wonderful people that I have in my life. I feel very, 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 very blessed. So, and today we are here to celebrate the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful soprano who is Janine DeBeek. So hailing from Trinidad and Tobago, soprano Janine DeBeek has been described as breathtaking from start to finish from NRC Netherlands and an artist on an, and an artist of dramatic presence and versatility from the Washington Post. Most recent engagements have included Susanna Lenozzi di Figaro at San Francisco Opera, Helena, a Midsummer Night's Dream at Deutsche Oper Berlin, and future engagements include La Folie in Plate in Teatro Under Divine and Maria in the Sound of Music with Houston Grand Opera. Welcome, Janine. Janine, are we going to get you out of your kitchen because we can hear a little bit of a thing because you're in the kitchen? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and um, yeah, it's it's as I always say every morning, everybody, um, neither Janine nor myself are medical doctors or psychiatrists. So please, if you need support, you know, we are getting a bit more relaxed about, you know, being able to go outside and to the sh apparently the shops are opening on Monday. I, I had no idea the shops were opening on Monday. They're not open already. No, not at, not at all. So well, apparently they're all opening on Monday. But but still, there are going to be people that have been inside for ages and um, are just going to need that, that maybe a bit of motivation or a little bit of a pep. 
so if you can reach out to somebody else or if you're somebody that needs that support please reach out for yourself you know because it's so important we're coming into the summer months now and we want you to enjoy your summer so if you need any support please 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 reach out it is there for you i promise and we encourage it okay so we've got i've said hello to susan i've oh sani hi sani lovely to see you Oh my God, and Linda, lovely to see you as well. And Hugh, morning Hugh. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Janine! Hello, gorgeous. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, it's so wonderful to have you with me this morning. You're just, with everybody, we're all so happy to see you. So, can you tell me, what was it like growing up as a classical musician in Trinidad? Um... I well, when I started, I mean, I, I, I mean, my grandparents were um, singers in church. My grandmother was, mm -hmm. um, and whenever, when I was a baby, she would rock me uh, all mm -hmm. the time and sing to me the same song over and over and over. And uh, then, you know, in my country is a very musical country. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, it's automatic that when you go to school, you learn to sing in choirs, you learn to dance, mm -hmm. um, where you learn all these different art forms because we have several different art forms due to the um, diverse, the diversity in our cultures. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and so I was fortunate to be in a school that encouraged um, all the girls, because I went to an all-girls school, an all-girl Catholic school. <laughs> I went to an all-girls school as well, but it was Church of England. <laughs> and uh, and um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm raised as an Anglican, so we, uh, I also learned the music and this classical form style at church. Mm -hmm. So those things came very naturally to me from since I, I mean, from since I was baptized, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I, um, I, you know, I would, my, my mom put us through ballet, gymnastics, you know, every possible thing that you could get to have that white picket fence. <laughs> and, um, I did piano lessons. I had, um, uh, ba uh, I said ballet, piano, singing, choir, tennis. And then um, when we moved, um, I went to a school where this woman who had studied at Royal College of Music around the age of 16, she said to me, we have a national competition in Trinidad and Tobago, or we used to, um, and um, where the schools would participate and you would have uh, different um, categories for duets and solos and things like that. And she heard me in the choir and she asked me if I wanted to train privately. So I went to her and I started taking voice lessons from her as well as taking piano lessons at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I did my Royal College of Music London examinations and Trinity College of Music yeah. examinations and British examiners, even though they play trumpet, would come and examine us. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what they do in the colonies. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we felt you know, great about it and, and inspired. And, um, you know, it, it clearly took, it clearly set my life trajectory in, in, in this direction, which is a, which is a positive thing. Mm -hmm. It, and, um, and it also helped me balance work and the, the two sides of my brain as well, which I think is really important for any child growing up. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I would say that I'm, uh, it was quite a difficult uh, decision to do at the end as to what I was going to do when I was graduating at 18, because at one point I wanted to be a lawyer, I wanted to be a psychologist. Um, and then both my music teachers told me, yeah, you can have a career in piano or voice. Didn't know anything about it. So I explored it and I um, uh, explored the options and I decided I was going to give it a try because my, I knew that my personality fit well with creating all the time. Mm. And so I went from there. I would say that um, growing up as a classical musician there, for me at first, I didn't know anything else. That's all I knew was classical music. Mm -hmm. um, of course, there's carnival, there's calypso, they, mm -hmm. you know, and, and um, there's folk 
music, there's limbo, they're, they're really um, traditional art forms that a lot of people, even in Trinidad, don't know about or don't really explore because it's not being taught at all of the schools in Trinidad and Tobago. A lot of people don't ex get a chance to experience it. Mm -hmm. The one thing that doesn't get explored very, um, uh, it's not explored deeply enough is classical music. So the, the audience for classical music is very, very, very small. So trying to, as an adult, go back there and um, influence, for me, I think is quite difficult because people want the instant uh, contact with the other art forms that are more popular, I would say. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. It's not, it's, even now, it's not easy. Um, mm -hmm. There are many people who don't even know about me. They have no idea that I was... Uh, on BBC Proms or Salzburg Festival or San Francisco Opera, or they, they, they have no clue. <laughs> you know? Oh my God, and I have to say, I have to say that that BBC Proms rejoiced greatly with Chinake was, <gasps> I was just screaming at the television. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> You just and every run that you did, I was just like, come on! <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yeah, like you were at a. It was like you were at a. Um, a I don't know, some kind of football match or something. And you're like, go! Oh, it was just, it, you know, for every. I'm sure for every black musician, it was just so wonderful. To I see have to say that. that experience was insane. <laughs> <laughs> it was insane. <laughs> in an incredible and proud and happy way. I have never, I mean, I'm so grateful to Chi Chi for just being very insistent and finding me. I mean, she literally yeah. found me on Facebook mm -hmm. and she was insistent to contact my agent to to say, listen, uh, do you not know who I am? I'm Chi Chi. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm like- Who is the another phenomenal classical musician? You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you need i want i want janine yeah. make it happen you know and yeah. and i'm so glad that she she was um proud of me and insistent on having somebody that the heads of bbc for example didn't know about yeah you know they would easily go to any other um uh, black singer that is in a you know massive agency and yeah. and go directly to that for because yeah. they have a fantastic publicist and everything yeah. and who is Janine Debe you know like nobody knew about knew about me but she took a chance yeah we did after that that's all I can say <laughs> And you know, and I, when I did my prom last year, and when I did my prom, I actually could, I, I could just feel, I could still see you in my head, and that just made me feel even prouder to be on that stage. So thank you for for, for just shining that light. It was incredible. Good morning, Rodley Earl Clark. Rod, morning, morning, morning. Rodney. I know. And he was like, I yes. Going, yes. As well. <laughs> and Linda. Oh, Denmark. Oh, I am. And uh, Linda is saying, yeah, the BBC Proms performance was mind blowing. You see? I told you. Aww. I'm telling you, I'm still super blushing over that moment because it's just um, not just because you feel like a rock star up there, but also yeah. I have never in my life thus far, I'm still waiting to find an orchestra of people that are forthright in each of their instruments because most of these people are principal mm -hmm. um their their principals in their own different orchestras around the world yeah. and they come together for the sole purpose of showing up and saying to the world listen here we are mm -hmm. and they are there to not show up each other but to work as a team we did all of that literally in under five days we only had two rehearsals and we had a rehearsal that morning, and then, of course, we were in the in the in the late night spot, so we were really tired. Wow, you know. So I I'm I I was very I was really happy to exactly. I mean, like that to the orchestra, that yeah. to Kevin. As you say, I mean, Kevin was. I mean, we yeah. were exhausted, but he still kept it together. His hands were like. Yeah, the power of music, Janine, the power of music and the power of that collective connection, you know, and 
people wanting to make that music just transcend and I really felt that you got you guys made it transcend good morning Kareen um I think um I think his name is Roe um Janine you have so many fans in Israel too he's saying and Rodney L Clark is just saying it's been a while great to have those experiences that turn the spotlight onto excellence absolutely Rodney so, so tell us tell us Ooh. tell us tell us tell us Janine you know in terms of opera, you know, what roles or composers do you love to sing the most and why? Um, I would, I would say that I, I, I mean, everybody kind of knows me now for singing um, Handel. <laughs> and, you know, Handel kind of, it fell into my lap. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm still really, really learning about him and about, about Baroque music in general. And it excites me. So, um, and some of my, um, f actually, I think some of my first um, professional roles, uh, leading lady roles were in Handel, Rhoda Linda, mm -hmm. and now recently Cleopatra, and in the future, Artina. And so I, um, I, I'm really learning about my voice with him. And with Handel, I just find that, you know, you're able to create almost like jazz. I love the fact that you are able to express yourself in that return, keeping within the realms of the Baroque rules, but at the same time doing things that are specifically tailored to your voice. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you are able to put your own stamp on the music. And that's why I find it's very close to jazz in that way. You know, you have your standard, and then when you come back to do the improvisation, you do the improvisation, and you go back to the standard. And I really, really like that. Um, I, I, I really like the, the freedom to be able to create with him, because it's like, you know, you have this, like, I see, like, a white canvas, okay, mm -hmm. on which, you know, I'm able to, like, paint different colors with my voice. If I could, like, say it in a very artistic <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, I feel like I get a stronger connection to him and understanding of my instruments as I mm -hmm. as I gain more knowledge about the about that particular genre. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh wow. So um if anybody has got some questions for Janine, please feel free to put it in the chat and she will answer them if she can. <laughs> I'm gonna put that caveat just in case. You know. <laughs> so <clears throat> <clears throat> Tell me, like, behind the scenes as a as a vocal classical musician, I mean, behind the scenes in this pandemic that we've had, you have started doing some vocal teaching, haven't you? I have. <laughs> I, 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 you know, um, I, when this panda, pan, pan, blah, pandemic happened, I, I mean, the first thing that crossed my mind when the theater shut down was, <sighs> I need a break. I just need to sleep for 10 days, at least 10 days. I really didn't think that it was going to go on for this long, to be honest. I don't think anybody thought that. Mm -hmm. um, no, I have to say there are some people who thought, no, Janine, get home. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm in Switzerland. If you, um, yes, um, you didn't get to go home, did you? No, so I was yeah. in Galen Theatre, mm -hmm. and um, we were about to, we were literally in four days about to premiere a new production of Giulio Cesare, and I was um, supposed to be singing Cleopatra. And, uh, <laughs> and then we did our sort of final orchestra rehearsal, mm -hmm. and then they said, great, the theatre is closed. And I did not know what to do, because I was like, well, do I get on a flight and go home? Do I go back to America? Do I go to my sister in York? Uh, and I just did not want to get on another plane. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up here with a friend. I'm very mm -hmm. lucky and fortunate to, for, for her to just open her home and her heart to me. And whilst I was here, I, I, didn't, I wasn't very negative about the crisis per se. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I was sad that I wasn't able to go home, sad that mommy is home by herself and, I'm, mm -hmm. and my sisters are both separate and alone where they are. And, uh, and both your sisters are nurses, aren't the they? The one, Kyle's in T Tobago mm -hmm. and she's in the hospital there as a, the, the head of the physiotherapy department. 
Yeah. And my other sister, Tonya, is in York, and she works in the hospital there as well as in Hull. Thank you. And, Thank you so yeah, she sends these pictures like every other week when she's in the hot week in full gear and mask, and it's, it's really nerve-wracking. Mm -hmm. But however, whilst I was here, I thought, okay, I just, I just kept being positive. I actually really didn't talk to friends that were negative yeah. about the whole shutdown with the theaters. I understand, especially for those that weren't making a lot of money anyway in the first case, how this is a big trauma for them. Mm -hmm. um, but even for me, if you're not making any money, you're not making any money. Um, and so you start to wonder where is your life going and what you should be doing. And you start asking these questions, which can either drive you in a very negative way or in a very positive way. And for me, I was like, OK, Let's get it together. I'm not going to be negative about this because I've been here before. I've been here where six months I didn't have work and no one knew anything. No one knew anything about me. So what am I going to, I have to choose where my mind's going to go. And Amen. I mean, I have to, I have to, I have to go within myself to find the deepest part of myself that hasn't been explored yet, wants to come out and or maybe some voice or some outside voice has been telling me that i couldn't do or i've just been shy about it or not confident enough about it and now is the time to manifest those things how do i do that and i sat down with myself for like a month and a half just going can i do this i mean 50 something thousand followers pff, nobody's gonna listen to me nobody's gonna want to hear me talk about <laughs> <laughs> so here in my voice lesson today, I pull on my cord. I saw that. Actually. <laughs> you have to activate your cord. Oh, and then you have to, you know, touch this part. Yeah. yeah. And then, <laughs> and then all my colleagues are gonna be like, yeah, Janine. Yeah. Or and the other and the other thing too is, I didn't want to to seem like I was taking money from people mm. during a time where no one was working mm. but i tr and so i was just really balancing it out to say okay but at the same time i'm a professional opera singer and i'm home so i think it would be a great opportunity for you to invest in right now mm. and believe and trust that your work will come back and it'll all you know it'll all mm. circle through it'll all the universe will align itself again mm. So one day I just was home and I was videotaping myself as I always do for my for my own lessons with my teacher. Mm -hmm. And I just sent it, I sent her like a couple seconds and she goes, yes, that's it. And I was like, hmm. I think people might want to see this. Yes. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? Find a nice caption. Yeah. And I sent it. And it, people liked it. I think it was the first one I did was the, um, I was in a yellow sweater mm -hmm. and I was doing vowels. It was literally mm -hmm. under 30 seconds or something. And, mm -hmm. and, and it, I don't know, it, people went nuts. And I was like, okay. And that was like the beginning. And, mm -hmm. and that was even before Corona a little bit, like it was the week of. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay. And then I started going on and it really helped me just decide, okay, what have I always wanted to do? I've always wanted to have my own business of some kind. I don't know what that is, but this could possibly be an opportunity. Why pass up on it? God is giving you a chance. I really, I really identify with you. I mean, I think it was the first week and the same as you. I was like, I can choose to be in the... I mean, as a coach, I believe in us empowering our state of mind. So I love what you're saying. I really love what you're saying, you know. So, and I was just like, how am I going to serve? Like, so I can choose to go into the negative of, oh my gosh, I'm not singing. Or I can look at all my other skills and say, Nadine, get up and lead, you know, because you've led. That's what you've done, you know, like get up and lead. So I, this is this is why we are sitting in front of each other. Because, you know, yesterday we sh show 60 of this. You know? Uh, you, yeah. I so, mean, you, what, you, what you're doing, maybe, I mean, I'm in awe of what you're doing and how you do it and your work ethic. And I mean, to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, I was very late for this meeting and she was like, that's why you have to be on time. And I was like... <laughs> I mean, 
you I'm know. So sorry. <laughs> and I was like, I'm in quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you. It's so great, you know. But I want you to hear that, you know, I've watched some of your your things on Instagram and they have been mind-blowing. They've been amazing and you know, your technique, your your voice, your work ethic is is out of this world. I mean, I've watched you as you've been in a show as well. And you ain't like going, oh, I've done my rehearsals on stage. I'm going to go home now. You're like in the practice room afterwards. So I know that anybody that does learn from you or teach, you know, or whoever you teach is going to just be getting the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So, so, so I celebrate you for that. So we've got some people talking here. We've got um, Hugh saying music has been so very important in our lives never more so than now. So very good to hear from Janine and her journey. Thank you, Hugh. And Sani is saying, even if you're not working, you're still a singer. We all sang before uh, we had work and we will after. Absolutely, Sani. And Linda is saying, yeah, I remember that one. I have literally watched all your videos, Janine. <laughs> and Sani said, even if you, oh yeah, I've got that. I've got that. He's done it twice. And then Teresa Elwes. So said so are we in awe Teresa is saying and Linda is saying wow Nadine you're amazing we're all I was about to say that I was like can I say that part can I yeah you can do you go you say it Linda says wow Nadine you are amazing <laughs> <laughs> all right I'm receiving it okay I'm following my talk I'm gonna receive it <laughs> Exactly. Thank you. Thank you so much. So tell me, uh, Janine, so when, you know, obviously you're doing these, uh, these, these vocal um, sessions on um, Instagram and you're now teaching people online as well. And they can go to Instagram, can't they, if they want to, um, to see where to, well, you'll tell them later. No, 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 no. They, they, they go to JanineLessons at gmail.com. Janine lessons at gmail.com. Yeah. Okay. Let's make sure we put that in the comments just in case somebody does want to after this. I mean, even if they go to Instagram or Facebook, I'll just direct them there. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. So tell me, outside of this thing that we've all been going through, what is behind the scenes like for you? Um, well, you mean as an as an opera singer, just yeah. in general for it. You know, it I think it's so funny how many things I didn't learn in school that I'm learning now. <laughs> I, and, I, and I also understand that each opera singer, um, each musician has their own journey and own experiences. So to be fair to, the, to, to school, um, they can't necessarily tell you how your career is going to go and if you're going to have one and what life is going to be like. Mm -hmm. and, I've, and, and just if someone had you know, spoken to us, um, you know, really about, you know, whether if you don't make it and you, you end up becoming a stay at home mom, or if you don't make it, then you have to end up changing careers and going back to school after all the money you spent in conservatory. What's it like being on the road as a freelancer? Are you, you know, if you're studying in America or England, um, there's no festing system. So you're always going to be on the road. I did not understand why we were not talked to or spoken to about that part of the business. And if you're going to be a freelancer, how do you, do you understand that you are a sole entity, a sole professor, you are, you are a business, you are a business, you are a company. What does that mean as an individual company you know as an individual proprietor how do you manage your money how do you do taxes what do you do for retirement how are you you know what happens when you can't sing anymore things like that no i mean i'm i'm 38 years old and i'm still learning about different ways of saving money i mean i literally don't spend money but but saving it learning how to have my own and um, I know that Juilliard now, for example, offers a business course uh, for, the, for the school. And I, I really hope that that gets implemented into schools um, in general. Uh, but for example, you know, everybody, all, um, when you know, and I'm talking just because I studied in America, hmm. the push is to like, okay, if we all, if 80 people from one school 
graduate from their masters. Imagine the rest of the world with the number of conservatories and the workforce of people that are coming out, the artists that are coming out from conservatories, universities, you know, small community colleges, whatever. They're all coming out with these degrees and diplomas of music performance. Where do they go? And what do they do? And what and how do they survive? As a freelancer in America, the push is to come to Europe to be to become a fest person because you'll have a steady job for a year and you'll be in this house and you'll probably end up having a life in Germany or wherever, right? And that was a long time view, but now times have changed. Yeah. Yeah. Nationalism is on the rise or if not very present mm. it is less expensive to hire your own people or within this within the framework of where the company is than it is to hire out internationally all the time i'm not saying that they they don't do it but on a regular basis mm. and different different singers all the time mm. the other thing that i that that i um question and wonder about is you know as a female traveling by myself yeah the things that people don't understand or even question about what I would go through trying to get from one country to the next, get from one performance to the next. Mm -hmm. You know, I faced um, being uh, held because they don't believe my passport is real. You know, I'm a Trinidad and Tobago uh, citizen mm -hmm. uh, and they look at my passport in Russia, for example, and Twice I've been to Russia and I've been held. Mm. My stripped, mm. you know, things like that. And those kind of traumas, you know, we don't really talk about, but then we come on the stage and we have to smile. Yeah. Or yeah. be emotional. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> and still do our job. That's part of yeah. that. I'm not necessarily complaining, but it's just, no, I want just, people just, to know. Just, yeah, your real experience. That actual real experience mm. can either make or break you absolutely and and i want younger singers to know or even people of of my age group who don't um who would not have necessarily gone through some of the things i've gone through to know that that happens to their fellow colleagues when they get into um meeting situations with them and their experience it's not all happy for everybody no no yeah and, you know, on the positive side of things, of course, I've been able to travel to different countries to see the history that I, because I grew up learning European history, love European history. So seeing Europe for the first time, seeing the architecture, seeing the, 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 the museums, the music, the dancing, because I try, I get myself involved in what's going on in my community whenever I travel. I dance tango. Every time I go to a different city, I try to immerse myself in their culture as much as I can if I have enough time. And, um, and it helps my singing, especially for singing Baroque music, because it's not something that's at home. It's not my experience at home. So seeing, when I come to England, which is like my love for architecture, and <laughs> it's, you know, all the churches and the, the, the abbeys and stuff, you just, I mean, I went up to an abbey, it's called, Re 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 oh, it's like R-I-V-E-L-E-A-U Abbey, E-A-U-X -E Abbey, it's in England, it's um, Rivlo, oh, I can't remember. I don't know, I, I, I absolutely don't know it actually, so. But I went to this abbey and mm -hmm. I just started singing. And the acoustics in there and I just started to imagine what this actual church would have been like when it was you know fully built and the roof is off and everything and there's still a massive acoustic in there it's amazing mm -hmm. so i get a lot of inspiration being a freelancer as opposed to being in just one spot which is which is amazing yeah. oh, wow. oh anthea was just saying it's pronounced revo oh good thank you oh, thank you <laughs> Thanks, Anthea. Corinna is just saying, you guys are amazing. I really enjoy your videos. She's talking to you. She's saying the, teacher, the teaching is fabulous and the advice from both is excellent. Janine, please talk about your ornamentations for, the, for Vodoro Pupile. How long did it take to learn? 
And then Sani is saying the, the lonely road of art, self-directed at times. And um, Anthea said, beautiful place. So um, yeah, Anthea, that's gorgeous. So it's let's finish great. talking about behind the scenes and then we'll go to Corinne's question, if that's all okay. right. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So where did we get to? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, I got, I got, I, I mentioned both the, for me, in my yeah. experience, the negative side of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, you were going on to the positive side of it, yeah. about getting immersed in culture and yeah. of where you are, if you can, and if you've got time. Yeah, um, there is, you know, and there's, it's just about how basically you handle yourself, learning how to handle yourself mm -hmm. as, um, as a, as a single soul traveler. You know, yeah. you can't walk around with a sign saying, hello, my name is Janine, I'm an opera singer. Oh, and by the way, I'm from Trinidad and Tobago because <laughs> half of Europe thinks I'm from Africa. That's yeah. another thing that yeah. I think, right? And there's there's a there's even a discrimination around that because I could be an African that's total, that's, com that's a doctor or that's whatever, but they sort of, you know, some people have fixed in their mind what that could possibly mean. Um, I, I find that if you, um, that you, you, you really need to be, and as a female, you really need to be aware of your surroundings and the, the you know, whilst traveling and whilst you're in the country that you're, that you're in, um, and have the support, demand the support from the, the presenter that you're working to tell you about, you know, who to call if something happens, you know, what to do when you need, make them have a list of things for you um, to protect yourself while you're, while you're there, yeah. you know, in these different, uh, these different countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so while you're, so while you're there as well, I mean, obviously you, you go to the, to the, to the country or the, the theatre with your role already prepared, mm -hmm. but, um, what do you use the time also to prepare other roles that you've got coming up at the yeah. time or how do, well, how do you use your time when you're when you're traveling right so for me because i am um there's a lot of for, for me because there's a lot of um new repertoire that i'm learning it's mm -hmm. it's really almost simultaneous and yeah. that's not necessarily a great thing but it is what it is yeah i agree i, I mean I identify. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm proud, but I'm not proud at the same time of learning Susanna in four weeks. Mm, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. That's the largest role in opera. You don't want to spend four weeks doing that, but I, ha I had no choice because yeah. everything was a new role after the next. So what yeah. was I going to do? Mm. Um, it sounds gloriously, so I heard some of it. So it's glorious. It's glorious. No, not for San Francisco. God, no. I would never learn that for San Francisco in four uh, weeks for another company, uh, product, okay. which really helped for when I got to San Francisco, for example. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, learning this, learning the rules simultaneously, all, all of the, you know, and honestly, it's when people have to also know and understand the, the deep preparation that we have to go through months or a year before we actually get to, to, to stage. Mm -hmm. And it's in, insane. Mm -hmm. You know, if you take a project now, when people say, Oh my god you're booked for 22 yeah because i'm learning it now yeah exactly. <laughs> i'm learning it now it yeah. does it, I, it you know a, a lot of a lot of i don't know what people think about singing and singing is not just something that i wake up this morning and go la 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 and then it's great like i'll tell you when i was i mean i could always sing but it took me years to get up to any kind of level that I'm at now, mm -hmm. honestly, mm -hmm. you know, so any preparation is always longer than the actual spot that you're at. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, the, the, the level of preparation that we have to go through is it would, would, if I think if we'd, we'd have known what it was when we first started, we would never have got involved. I mean, we were, we were totally spoiled in school. <laughs> we were totally spoiled in school. Let me tell you, because I can't, I can't, this popped into my brain like just last year. I said, "How in the you asked me about learning roles simultaneously?" Okay, after I've learned the role, I have to go to my teacher. After I've learned the role, I have to go to a coach. Exactly. But coach and teacher is in America. 
So who do I go to when I'm in Germany or when I'm in France or when I'm in England or when I'm in Spain or when I'm in Portugal or when I'm in Italy? Or I therefore have to network and find different people, different pockets of people that are going to be able to help me and that are proficient in the language, in the, in the, in, in the style of music, in the role that they've played it before. And you, you know, you have, that's a part of the business that we took for granted when we were at school, or you take for granted if you're fest in Germany, because they already have it provided for you. And there's a, there's a huge responsibility and expectation on a freelancer coming into our house versus a fast person that's already in the house, which is even more of a weight because they expect that if you're a guest, Mm -hmm. then you are up to here. Yes. Yes. But the amount of time and energy that's spent prior because you have to travel and find different people Mm -hmm. and work, you work everything out and you're doing different roles and it's on the road and you don't have your team with you. Mm -hmm. That's a that's that's a whole nother yeah. category. Yeah, I mean, I it, it's it's quite interesting to me because I came from the thing where I never went to conservatoire, so I had this thing where I had I had had to do that anyway on my own, like try and piece these people together. But I still had that same experience as what you're talking about because then when I started to go to other countries, I still had to redo it again. So even though I I had I had I had had you know, training in that, I suppose, because of what how, how I learned, it, it's still never easy to find the person, as you say, that's proficient, that understands the style of music as well that you want to sing, because it's not just even if they're proficient, like, how do, do they understand the style that you, that, and, and understand your voice and the relationship? Yeah. <laughs> that right there, golden, that I was just thinking, to find also a person that understands your voice and also understands what you would like to express. Yeah. My Susanna is not going to be Kathleen Battle's Susanna. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to be Rary Gris Susanna or whomever else you think that you equate me to for singing Susanna. Yes. In your brain. <laughs> yes, yes. I am me and I have my own experience and my yes. version of Susanna is not that. Wow. You know? And that's that's that is 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 quite um, challenging. I would say I wouldn't say it's hard. It's just challenging. Yeah, of course. And getting enough rest as well. I suppose like getting enough sleep and you know. Oh, I never sleep. I don't sleep. At- <laughs> I don't know what sleep is. Like <laughs> I think I finally just woke up from from sleeping like since March. <laughs> okay, so then if you never sleep, you gotta hydrate. It, it's gotta be one or the other. <laughs> Earl Grey tea. <laughs> Thank you, Queen. <laughs> Earl, whoever you are. <laughs> oh, well, I just, I think it's important to answer um, Corinne's question since you so kindly put it in the chat. She said, Janine, can you please talk about your ornamentations of Vadoro Pupile? How long did it take you to learn? Oh. <laughs> um, so... Um, it's not just about Vadora because there's a whole role that I was doing with Cleopatra. So I got together with a with a um, um, a colleague of mine who does ornamentations. Um, I also have worked with Emmanuel Haim, who's the uh, maestro of uh, maestra of um, Le Concert d'Astre. And we did Rodolinda together. We did that DVD together. So I knew that she also wrote, that she also did Cleo, um, Julia Cesare, of course, standard music for Baroque um, musicians. And she did it with Natalie Desai, which is online. So I knew that her ornaments were already um, um, uh, uh, produced and aired and everything. So actually what I do is a mix of Emmanuel and Gert Amelung in, in Germany. And um, and they're, they're so they're not personally my own, which is why I always say ornamentations done by Manuel Haim. Mm-hmm. And uh, and um, it took me, I would say, about a month to really get all of the ornamentations of all seven or eight or nine or a gazillion arias that that Cleopatra sings in my body, mm-hmm. and and. That video is the first time I've performed it ever in public, ever. I was just going for a walk with my friend and I was like, this is a really nice um, 
place to sing. I mean, it has a bunch of graffiti, but I'd like to sing here. And he pulled out the phone and I started singing and I was like, this is really cool. It's nice to be in an environment that's just not classical music, but still you find the beauty in the, in the space. And I, I was like, yeah, urban meets Baroque music. That's cool. I like that. But it, but I saw the video. It's beautiful. Maybe we could, uh, if we can put, I don't know if you've got it on YouTube. Maybe we can put a clip of it in the comments. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we'll put a clip of it in the comments. I'll just write that down so I mm -hmm. can remember all these things to remember. Now, Sani says, the lonely road of art, self-directed at times. And Joseph says, this is wonderful. Not enough artists talk about the reality of the dream of being a classical singer. And <laughs> Girl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Corinne, Corinne is saying, I love your videos too, Nadine. Thank you, Corinne. And uh, Hugh is saying, nothing is more Can music. I just say that your video on your Facebook page, when you open it, I'm like, when there's two, like, where is... She's on a lake with a <laughs> with a with a gown, and she's on. A... <laughs> it was in Scotland. I went to Scotland. You know, I love the just like you. You love the mountains, don't you? I love the mountains. The mountains. Yeah, and so we went to Scotland to shoot that um, because it just which was part? So um, oh my god. I was going to leave my head now, you know, dispatch itself. Can't remember Inverness, Aberdeen. Remember all those places we went? <laughs> I know. We've been all around. I'm trying to remember. Inverness, I, Aberdeen, I was... Edinburgh, Glasgow. Girl, I can't remember where we flew into even. I will remember and put it down because my brain's not there. I will. Absolutely. I promise. I'll put the. I'll put it in the in the chat. Yes. So, so <laughs> Hugh is so saying. We can all no. go there and shoot a video because I am <laughs> totally stealing your idea. And the next video that's coming out of Janine Dubique is me on a bloody lake. I'll probably be riding a horse. Yes, I love that. Come on. <laughs> probably be riding a horse. So, um, with Hugh one gladiator in the background or something. Yes. Oh, yes. No, they don't have gladiators in Scotland. They have gladiators. No, it's biking. Okay. Okay. I hear you. So Hugh is saying nothing is more moving than listening to a beautiful vocal performance. It can generate so many emotions. It's a powerful talent to have continued success, Janine. Yes, she does, and she does, and you are mesmerised by her when you when you hear her sing. Hugh and Anthea is saying came late to conversation, but love handles so marvellous for the voice and definitely should be considered as baroque scat. Oh, I love that. I'm stealing that, Anthea. Sorry. <laughs> Anthea's my singing teacher. She's one of my singing teachers. Oh, then I'm really sorry. I'm copywriting that. That's going to be the label of my next album. Baroque <laughs> Scat. Sorry. Too late. Too so, late. It's public. So, I took it. There you go, Anthea. It's gone. So Joseph is saying, your ombre piante from Rodolinda made me weak. Oh, and Joe a lot. Uh, and Joe Goldsmith is saying it's such a beautiful video. Thank you, Joe. And Teresa Carter Young is saying that they're called Highlanders. That's what people call oh. them. Yeah. <laughs> and Jake, we weren't expected to talk about any of this. Otherwise, <laughs> so we didn't do our research. <laughs> so we didn't do our research. Otherwise, we wouldn't be going here. But you know, it's okay. You know, the fact that we love it is even is is enough. And uh, 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 Danny, Dave O'Sullivan is saying, you two are so funny. You've made my day. Thank you. And Anthea is laughing as well. Damn, I didn't know they're called. So, I oh my I've God. I've name Highlanders before. I have to look. Yes, up. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, what three tips could you kind of give everybody in terms of vocal clapping? Okay, I have that. <laughs> I need to read from my notes, guys. That's okay. We love you for that. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> um, so this one is very, very, very important to me. Um, uh, well, okay, I'm, I'm going to leave the important one last. The first one is, for, for especially for young singers, is to have your team. Yeah. Have the people around you that are of like mind that are your champions, that are your cheerleaders. Yes. 
right? So for me, that is my teacher, my mom, my, my sisters, um, and my agent, right? Um, they are, they will never falter. They will never, they will only steer me in the right direction. And I never, nowadays, because I've gotten myself into a lot of trouble, um, because I love to speak my mind and I hate injustice. And there is just times when I must learn how to be prudent and know when and how to say something and, and how it comes across. Because when you say something, you know, it's, you may think that you've said it some way, but the person, you, can, you are not in control of another person's reaction mm -hmm. and how they perceive what you say. You have to be very careful, self-preservation um, about how you interact and how you say things with people. But for me, and I think for others, if you have that team and that support, just check in with them always first before making any decisions or moves. Um, the second thing is know your business. Know your business. Know what your business is about. Know, learn, uh, learn from others how they handle their craft, how they handle being a business person and a sole proprietor as, an, uh, as a classical musician. Um, this is very important and it's become even more important now um, as we're very aware of what it can be like to not work. Um, expand your mind, expand yourself um, outside even of classical music and rediscover what is the deepest part of you that you can still express and be an artist 100%. And my last thing is a Maya Angelou quote that, I, that, that hit me hard. Um, due to the fact that I am who I am. <laughs> and I really, I mean, I really, I'm so passionate about injustice in the field, injustice in general. I can't, you know, when people are mean to each other, I'm high, highly sensitive around that. Um, and sometimes I have to learn that it's not my battles to fight or choose the battles to fight. Um, but the result of that is, Maya Angelou says, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Be kind to your colleagues because they will remember you in the future. That's oh, it. So beautiful. Thank you. I, I agree with everybody, every single one of those. I mean, the biggest one is finding your team. You know, I think when you're starting out on your own, it's, you know, you do need those people that you can check in with. It's so important. And as you say, traveling on our own, being in different cities, in different places, you need to know that you can pick up the phone to someone and say, look, I'm going through this. What do you think? You know, those uncomfortable conversations that you're talking about, I've been talking about that a lot recently, Janine, and I've got one of those today, actually, because of what you talk about injustice or justice and, and you know I, I so i have to speak up and even though i don't want to have that uncomfortable conversation it's something i'm gonna have to face today um and then rodney l clark is saying do you have any advice for young singers entering the profession i think she's kind of answered that rodney if that's okay um but if it's if, if, right that i don't i know if he just wrote I, that or... I think he wrote that before you started saying your tips so ah. yeah so he'll tell us if if, if that suffices. Hope Briggs says, great conversation, ladies. Janine, so Janine says, Sylvia Lindsay from SFO asked me to tell you hello. I played your Caribbean, Caribbean. Caribbean. Caribbean, oh, Caribbean songs for her and she loved them. Keep sharing your beautiful singing. Oh, wonderful. And Linda I said, so, so beautiful. Hope is so, so, so beautiful. She's oh. not in a black opera singer in um in california based in california oh hello hope lovely to see you and linda is saying so so beautiful thank you janine so tomorrow everybody we're gonna have the tenor ronald sam um and um yes i know i can't wait to have him on that another trainee another yes another guy from Judah dad which is an amazing um so it's going to be lovely to have him on and we're going to look at what we're going to be talking about with him so you'll see that tomorrow but as i've said 
Guys, I'm going to take a week off. I mean, tomorrow is going to be show 62. I mean, or session 62 or chat 62. I, I really, 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 I'm like you, Janine. I didn't do that at the beginning, but now I need a week off now. I need to be silent for a week. Yes. So I, I am going to take a week off next week, um, but I will be back with some more fabulous guests the following week. So we have Ronald Sam tomorrow and then we'll, and then I will take a week off and then I'll come back with some amazing people the following week. So Janine, all I can say is you as an artist, um, you your 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 work ethic, your preparation, your delivery, your attention to detail. Um, I mean, I've watched it, I've watched you and listened to you in a practice room where you've got one phrase and you're going over it a hundred times because you want to make sure that it's exactly in the slot. Your dedication to this art form is just absolutely phenomenal. I absolutely celebrate you and all that you do you you have a fabulous career now but you're gonna you're gonna have such a stunning path it's gonna be so exciting to see where you end up i mean i i mean the world is your i don't say the world is your oyster i say the world is your lobster because i just see all these tentacles and they go everywhere oh. you know? <laughs> and also i'm a dyspraxic so i kind of like do this thing in my mind where i have to do all this and it just all comes together <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but I just think you know you have been you you are just excellent at what you do you know really excellent and um and it's uh, all I can do is celebrate and keep championing you and supporting you mm. and you know I'm sure you're going to have even more fans now of people that just love the way that you deliver and do your work it's just you are such an amazing role model. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nadia. And Hugh is just saying, yes, the lasting memory you leave with people is how you made them feel. Please keep the faith and stay safe. Uh, Linda is saying, I will miss you, Nadine. Rest well. Grace says, thank you, beautiful Janine. Rest up, Nadine. Well deserved. And Danny is saying, we need 901. Beautiful start to the day. <laughs> thank you, Danny. What does that mean, we need 901? Because because I always, if you didn't notice just then, like when we started the show, I only ever start the show. We have that little place where we're having the tit tat at the beginning. But I only ever say, good morning, I'm Nadine Benjamin at 901. I never do it ah! before. Again. Never yeah. ever. I don't know what. You don't know what they're gonna do in their lives now, Nadia. They have to come back. They need their morning. Oh, I what? will come back. I promise. I will come back. But I do need a break. I absolutely need a break, just for a week. Just give me a week, guys. Promise, promise. And uh, Dave Sullivan is saying thank you. You are both wonderful art artists. And Lena is saying this morning has been a breath of fresh air. Thank you both for sharing your gift. She's going up to Scotland, guys. To the lake. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. I can see the name in my head. <laughs> I can literally see it, but I, I just can't say it right now, guys. I'm really sorry. Like, um, but I will put it in the chat. I promise to tell you where the video. And I'll even put the video in so just so you can so you can <laughs> see it. Um, what was I going to say? Um, uh, Janine, tell me, tell me, tell me. You know. I'm sure everybody here, as we all agree, you've you've just been a phenomenal chat this morning, and we love we've loved chatting to you. What are your final thoughts that you would like to leave with us, if there's any? Um, I would say that you know, singing is a small part of of what makes you successful or memorable. Mm -hmm. Be honest and true to who you are mm -hmm. at the core take time to really learn who you are and um, so that you can manifest your, your deepest desires. Always show up and I like this, I have this on my Instagram, it's always be your own sunshine. Oh, I love it! <laughs> oh, I love it! Oh, and you have brought sunshine to everybody this morning. So we're going to give you all the sunshine back, Janine. Thank you. May it shower you with gold and blessings and peace and love and light. And that goes for everybody here this morning. I'm sending you all love. Take care. We will see you tomorrow at the same time. Ronald April Sam! <laughs> Ronald Sam! We want to see Ronald Sam tomorrow. We can't yes. wait. Yes. So <laughs> Take care. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.